Hey everyone, this is Melvin from CUD Utility, and I'm here with Grim. Uh, do you want to say hi, Grim? Hi, Grim. Okay, so we're here to uh, show you guys something new. This is a tutorial on the 17 in the series here. Uh, this is Melvin and Grim's Black Ops Remapping Mario tutorial series, and uh, we're setting up a custom lookup table today, a lot. Uh, so we're going to get right to it here, and just give me a, a quick second to uh, switch over to our scene. And you'll see here, Grim's in his map here. We're doing this through uh, TS Viewer. It's just a cool way to uh, take a look at what's going on. So, anyways, Grim, you wanna you wanna tell them what a custom lookup table is? Well, basically, it's it's a set of well, it's an image that you can use to adjust the final lighting on any given map. It, it just add some variation to do some final tweaking or whatever, you know, just to get that final look that you want. Okay, so, so this this light basically, uh, or the custom LUT table, basically we would say is something that overall controls things like saturation, uh, the variance between contrast, um, and things of that nature. Yep, uh, just as I think it, it should be done close to the end of finalizing the map, and it should be use there. And, okay. Um, yeah, it's like huge changes may not go down too well. So, so in a sense, use it, use, use it with care. Yeah, use it with a bit of care. You, you can go over the top with it and you'll get some really funky looking effects. That might be what you're looking for. It might not be, but that's entirely up to you. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, very cool. So, um, how does this work? What do we need to uh, have to do this? Do we need a, obviously a software editing program like Paint? Uh, .NET or Photoshop, we'll be using what, Photoshop for now? Uh, yeah, Photoshop, um, any image editing software with the ability to add layers and um, be able to change like layers over the whole image. So, okay, so anything that has layer editing capabilities in a sense. So additive layers or anything like in a sense uh, uh, what would you call yeah, those? Basically, basically what, you, what you want is adjustment layers. Oh, okay, know. adjustment layers in Photoshop are the equivalent of it. Yeah, so you, you've got, you can adjust, put an adjustment layer over the whole image and tweak the whole image, like the image as a whole, instead of just tweaking one, tweaking one layer of the image. Okay, good enough. Okay, so how do we start? What, do we should, what, what should we be looking for first? What should be the first step? Well, the first thing is because we don't have anything to generate a complete custom lookup table you actually want to use the one that's by default in the game so uh, you need the asset property editor yeah, for that but yeah but first of all you can see that the if you look at the NDA in, info in world spawn you can see that the default look material is lutz underscore t7 underscore default so we actually need to grab a hold of that so if we're going to the asset property editor you will find that material. It's okay. A map, and you actually want to. You want to do a search ID. for that, so they can. And how do people search? You search in the. Uh, you have a filters window there. You just type in lot. You don't need X model. You don't need sci-fi. You need animated or any of those. You just need no, to type in lot. Okay, just cool. Look under the name and you will find. You just make it easy for people to find quite a, it. Quite a few things. Um, but this is the default one that is set. By okay. So, so, when this is the light create. image, to be clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not the material, just the image. Okay. So we're going to open this image here. Yeah, just and click the Photoshop button if you had it, or export it, you know. Anyway. Okay. So basically, you just you, you need. Yeah, you it. can find it through the three button, the three dot button there. You can find it through there if you don't have Photoshop. Click on that button there, and it'll open up the folder where the file is located. And you just look for the same name, lot underscore curve dot tif. And you should be able to find it. Okay, so wh uh, what's next? Once we have that file, uh, obviously we're going to open that in Photoshop. Yeah, but before we get there, we actually want the screenshot oh. of the compiled. Good point. Good version, point. Of the, uh, version of the, the 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 fully compiled light light compiled version of the map. So okay, so like once this, you have your final one. lighting, you'd want to take a screenshot of an area that has a high contrast value, like very dark darks and very yeah. light lights, as much so as you can throughout the whole map. Find the area that has the most contrast. Take a screenshot of that area, as Grim's doing right here, as you can see. It's something like this, too. Yeah. It would be ideal, because you've got the, the bright light here and the very, very black areas. Right on. Okay. So um, it, it, I mean, it's not essential, but it gives you some sort of idea of like, the whole overall look of the map. 
Yeah. As, uh, instead of just like one specific area. So. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, so, so once we have our screenshot, what do we do? Then we do them into Photoshop. Okay, okay, so here we go. We're in Photoshop here now, and we've got a single image that we brought in, which is the LUT curve, um, I think LUT underscore curve uh, dot TIFF. And uh, Grim's already been working on it a little bit to make it easier, save some time so we can show you exactly what's going on. So where are we here? Well, this is this is the basic LUT curve. So what we need to do then is to overlay our screenshot. main image of screenshot over the top awesome. on a separate layer. So the, the whole idea is that any changes we make to this image will then be, we'll be able to Get, then get rid of this image and Change the changes this. Will, will affect the, the LUT curve and belief. Oh, awesome. Okay. So we're going to take this here. We're going to add, this is where we talked about adjustment layers. So uh, in other programs, it might be called other things. But basically, again, like Grim said, you wanted uh, something that can adjust the entire image, but the, that in a sense is a layer. Yeah. So you can make adjustments to one layer in Photoshop, but that will only actually affect the active layer. So then, once you've made the adjust, if you if you do it that way, once you've made the adjustments to that, you the the LUT image underneath will not have been changed. Yeah. So you you really need to use the adjustment layers over the top so you can change. So again, it's yeah, it's applied to both layers, not just one layer. So using an adjustment, to be clear, using an adjustment layer will be applied to both layers, or five or six or seven layers. Whereas uh, just using a, a layer modifier. Or layer adjust, like uh, sorry, a simple. If you go up to layers, say, and then and modify, you're gonna have just that effect on just that layer you're modifying. Yep. Okay, so and then now we I'll got. Move the, I'll move this image down a bit so I can see that the, the actual behind. image and the changes at the same time. So, cool. Um, okay, so this is a good demo, so you guys will see live uh, as he does it exactly how this works. So in Photoshop, we've got these adjustment layers. Yeah, you, if you can't see this window, you go to Window Adjustments. Okay, and that window will appear. Okay. Yeah. And under here, you've got stuff like brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, vibrance. These, these are basically the same adjustments that you would get in a regular layer modifier, in a sense. Like if you yep. were to go up to layer and, and do it that way. But this way, again, apply to the whole image. Okay, so, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, so, like I said, uh, I think it's better to be a bit sparing with any adjustments that you make because what you'll see in Radiant might not be what you see in the final game after you do it. So if just, you go too far. If you go way too far. I mean, it's if you had a few saturation layer like this and then start tweaking the color so everything goes green, like so, or whatever. This might not transfer over to... To the final the, compile properly. To the final compile properly. So you want to be a little bit careful with what you do. Take your time. You know. you just play with it and experiment in a sense. You'll have to, you'll probably yeah. have to do several compiles to get this uh, exactly the way you want it or to find it exactly where the safe zones are. Yeah. Take, for example, the brightness contrast layer that I'm sticking with. Okay, so. Ooh. Okay, so you throw some brightness contrast that really brightens it up. Adds a lot of uh, light, obviously. And it also lightens up the contrast or the dark areas. Yeah, if you double click on it, you can do some. You can do layer adjustments within here. It's not really what one these. Okay, so you, here you can adjust the brightness and then adjust the contrast at the same time, bring back the dark areas back up. Uh, you know, playing with it, see where you got it exactly. Once he's got what he wants, he'll show you with it on and off, so you can see uh, the difference. Yeah, so, so the blocks with the contrast right up are really black, but the lights are really light there, you know, that's probably a way too strong. Yeah. So, once you get, yeah, once you get where you, where you think it's good, um, that, that looks actually pretty good. Again, I should say that we are looking through, uh, at least you'll be seeing this tutorial through TS Viewer, but at the same time, it will give you a good demonstration of exactly what's going on. We're doing this at a high resolution, so you see exactly what I'm seeing. Or a high bit rate, sorry. Uh, the, you got the same thing with the levels. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So if you guys know filters, levels allow you to, you know, uh, pull out the blacks, uh, pull pull up the black levels, and, and you basically minus anything that like 
you know, with little scratches or little areas that are in a sense in insignificant. It'll allow you to wipe those out if you want to. Unless you play with the levels in, in a sense. That's what's called levels. <laughs> yep, silly as. <laughs> yeah, S silly as, eh? <laughs> so, uh, th this probably won't be anywhere near what the final output will be. It's uh, have to exaggerate things just a bit so that the end people will see on the video that it looks, you know, completely different to what you started with in the first place. Yeah, so I get you. So it changes pretty well on the video. Yeah, but I get you. see that every, every adjustment that's made on the image here, I turn this up, is actually adjusting the color table underneath. Okay, yeah, so the color table or the LUT, uh, the LUT image is getting adjusted by all these layers. Once we get it where we want it, what do we do then? Well, basically, you do not need this layer anymore. All you need is the background layer, which is your original image, and your adjustment layers. Which will have all these different changes. Like so. See. so is there any tips you could say? Like, is it good if you look at the original image without the layers, and then you were to look, uh, sorry, not, yeah, just without the layers, uh, the adjustment, sorry, and without this screenshot too, just for a second. Um, if you see the variance between colors here, if you guys pay attention closely to how colors blend, and then you watch here as he presses on these layers, how much of a difference there is. So you really want to make sure that uh, you want to keep a blend in within those images, I would think. Okay? You wouldn't want solid lines. So like you said before, that's where he's getting at when he says uh, you want to be careful with your adjustments. You want to play with them, be subtle with them, so that you don't end up with uh, you know a hard grid um, of lines going across. Yeah, so you, you need to have some variation so that it can pick up the colors uh, in the engine. Okay. Having it like solid, you'd just end up with it. I mean, in theory, you could actually put a film grain over the top, like a film look over the top, you know, like a sepia look. Yeah. You could you could do all of that um, with this. You could even actually turn it to a black and white game if you really wanted to. Yeah, I think um, it's pretty cool. This so, is, yeah, sorry, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you've got this image and it's, it's been adjusted slightly. So basically that's all you need to do for that. Okay. So, and you would just save this out? Uh, as a TIFF ours. file? Yep. Um, he, Grim's already done this, but he's just going to show you real quickly where the, uh, the save, stuff, you know, when how you do it be saved. Yeah, turn off layers. Don't worry about that little exclamation point. Just turn off layers and then yeah. save it. It'll tell you the file must be saved as a copy, but if you change the file name, it'll be fine, you know, and then just save. And uh, you do, you, after that, you don't have to change any other settings, just save it out, and it'll be done. So it'll just cancel this business. Okay, yeah, so you're going to cancel it, you've already had saved it. And so this is basically the Photoshop work is now done. We have our file, we have our image file now, and we can go back to the uh, ape, or what we formerly known as the ass man, and uh, we can go in there and you know, apply our new uh, texture to make our new material. And so Grimm's already set, again, he's already set this up, make it a little quicker for us. And you can see in Sci-Fi GR over the right there, he's got a mouse on. Um, there's the LUT material. And you would do that just by clicking on the top of the GDT where it says Sci-Fi GR. And you just right click on it and create new asset or new material. New asset allows you to, you know, go through a range of different things, whereas new material will give you exactly what we want for this instance. Okay, so you click on that, you have your material, you click on your material. And then what do we do if we go to the top and want to change our material uh, properties, obviously? It's a very, very basic material. All you need to do is change material category to filters, material type to create underscore what 2 dv. Okay, that's that's, that's it. bit. Service type is is to none. Uh, we have uh, obviously gloss from cu is custom and the non editor for usage. And yeah. that just keeps it out of the editor for selectability with yeah. texturing. Yeah, because you don't want this texture anywhere in the game because it's yeah. absolutely horrible. <laughs> That's so, awesome. And uh, you just the only the only option then you have is the color map. That's all that's needed. That's okay. all you can actually put in. There's nothing else there. Yeah, so, so you can type in the image as you had it before, like as in above. It's in your GDT file, obviously. Um, so you can type in that name, or you can right click on the GDT file, the name in the GDT, and you right click on the name where it says I lot seven. ZM Factory Zombie Grim or whatever. Um, if you right click on that, you can copy the name of it to put it into that space. But if you haven't got that, then just yeah. click the new image. So oh, that's a you... very better point. Yeah. <laughs> so if you click the new image, then you, you'll end up creating Read this it, image. Yeah. Yeah. So Go ahead. 
once you've created the new image, you need to find your texture, which is this one. Yeah, you can do that through there. The three dot button. That through the three dot button. The, there are only two settings you need to mess with on here, and that is image usage. It should be LUT TPH, and the compression must be uncompressed. And these are must haves, these two. Let, a LUT page and uncompressed are have to haves, and yeah, you should be fine. So if you, if you actually have a look, once you set the LUT page, it can only be uncompressed, but if you've had it set to something else beforehand, it might have something else in this box and you may change it, but you'll get the little one and triangle decide to tell you that you've screwed up. Okay. So, um, That's awesome. And then just save, save. Like your, your, Sorry. your GDT. <laughs> yeah. And see, that's, see. that's well, it for that as well. That's simple okay. as that. That's it. Okay, yeah. And I should say here, as you can see here real quickly, the image is, uh, you can see a lot more variation. Um, as you got a little closer here on the top of your preview image there. So like I said, you want to make sure that that's not thick bars like you said before, but you can do a lot with it. Film grain, old school movie stuff, you know. So, you know, have fun with this. Play with it. Um, okay, yeah. So what do we do after this now? We shut the no, AP yeah. down? Wait, you saved everything? First things first, copy the material name. Okay. Because trying to find it in the material editor that you have in the game, it's, it's just... Pain in the ass. Yeah, I guess so. Right. Just copy it, it's easier. And then bring up your now, empty info. Enter the info on your world spawn. So escape, deselect everything, and you should be left with world spawn. Very good point. Um, hit N if you can't see the window, and there will be there right there in front of you. And under there, you're looking for the under lighting. material. Under yeah. the lighting top. So uh, it will be LUTs T7 default by default. So um, we just need to change this name. To match the image that we've just created in right on. Asset Manager. Now, when I hit Enter, because nothing's happened yet, this should change. And there we go. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. I like the way that brightens up everything. Very dramatic. It gives so, you some more some more sense of realism. Yeah, uh, it gives you it gives you that final bit of tweaking that you you, just, you find it a lot harder to get. That kind of lighting in the game, you know, yeah. just by tweaking with lights and colors and things like that. You know, this this just gives you that fine little, little bit more control. Gives you that little more pop when it comes to making your maps. And so we'll we'll definitely be playing with our lot materials for our maps, and I hope you guys will be too. Um, Grim, this is an awesome tutorial. Thanks for sharing this stuff with everybody. Um, uh, the, 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 currently, the, the way that it's done here affects the whole map. So everywhere along around the map, we'll see these changes. Okay, yeah, so currently this, the way that Grimm's got it set up here, you, every area will get this highlighted, uh, you know, um, effect. So there is a LUT, um, what, is it, what was it called it before, a LUT volume? A LUT uh, volume. We haven't looked at a LUT volume yet. We just started playing with this today. So uh, we'll look at the LUT volume probably today or tonight or tomorrow or sometime. If someone else knows more about this, definitely post, you know, maybe leave comments in the section below, and uh, we can definitely help everybody out. But uh, for, for now, doing a, a LUT, custom LUT, uh, material you guys have now been uh, shown how to do it and it again affects your entire map so be careful play delicately with it but you can definitely get a little bit more of a boost for your visual um you know clarity of the of colors and stuff like that by doing it so again a great tutorial great uh great gives idea extra, gives you a little bit extra control you know like i mean doing it in photoshop a lot easier than trying to fix these things inside really so Right on. Okay, so is there anything else to this? Or we're basically with this here, you wouldn't have to add anything to any scripts or nothing. You just compile and you're good to go. Just compile, highlight, compile, good to go. Okay. Job awesome. Okay, so thanks again, Grim, for, for helping us out and for, for showing everybody this stuff and all that. Yeah. Um, do you want to say anything before we go? No, I think I've pretty much covered everything. <laughs> okay, good enough. Okay, so thanks so much for checking this out. If you guys like it, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to see more. We'll have more tutorials coming up. We have rooms to build and, and prefabs to, to redo to and blah, 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 blah. So we'll get to that soon. But uh, again, from Canada, a group from the UK. You want to say bye, Grim? Bye, Grim. Okay, and I'll say see you later. Peace. Much love. See you next time.